Sup dogs, name's Diodi, and welcome to this tutorial. Well, it's about time. <laughs> what I have in front of me is a map I created for my basic tutorials. And don't worry, you are not required to have watched them to understand this video. What I have in front of me are two events. And it's programmed such that this character will appear after one second from starting the game. And then two seconds later, he will start hopping. Four seconds after, the player will just make a little comment to themselves. Three seconds after that, the character will start chasing the player. Two seconds after that, the character will start spinning around. So in other words, I created an NPC based on time. And doing it this way is totally fine. There's no real problems with it at all. But can you imagine how many changes would be needed if we had to make alterations to this mechanic? Let me re-elaborate how this event works. One second from the start of this mechanic, stuff, my character, will appear. Three seconds from the very beginning, stuff will start hopping. A total of seven seconds from appearing, the player will make a little comment. But what if instead I was like, hmm, I want this whole entire cutscene to play out for 20 seconds instead. But before I make any changes, I should probably figure out where I want each of these little events to take place. What if I want stuff to start hopping at second number six? So that would mean having to do a bit of math. Well, this is one second, and that means five seconds afterwards. So six times five, 60 times five is 300. But now I also have to change this. I want this to occur at second uh, 10, 8. So this is a total of 6 seconds that have elapsed. So that's 2 seconds after he starts hopping. So... And then this... I think you guys get the point. If you ever need to make edits in between a mechanic like this, there's a lot of headache going on. And that's very, very inconvenient. But with the use of timers and variables, you can actually make this process a lot more easier. And if you never created a timer before, it's insanely easy. First of all, just to take a look at the wait command, for every one frame it is equivalent to 1 60th of a second. So if we're waiting 60 frames, then it's one full second, right? So I'm going to create the timer in my common events. This way it will be universal regardless of what map I'm on. And I'll call it timer. And I'll have this triggered through a parallel process with a switch that I will create and call timer. And I'll have it wait a total of 60 frames because that's equivalent to one second. And I'll create a variable. And I'll call that variable timer. Except to prevent any confusion between the variable timer and the switch timer, I'll call this timer var or timer var, which stands for timer variable. And I'll have it so that it increments one. So this says that after every 60 frames or one second, the variable will increment by one, AKA it's counting our seconds for us. So I'm gonna head back over into this process that I created on page two. And you can probably already imagine that I can start to change each and every one of these into conditional branches based on the variable. I can delete this, create a conditional branch checking for a variable for timer var. And if it equals one, AKA one second, stuff will appear. And I will do this for the rest of the sequences. Ta-da, now everything has been converted over and I can actually delete this self switch and delete this page. And now make sure that your conditions are based on the timer that we created as well as being triggered where you need it to. Now let's test it out. No, it would be cool if stuff randomly happened. One second in, stuff appeared. And now, he's gonna hop. There's a weird do over there. He's gonna chase, and then he's gonna spin. <laughs> I was actually nervous that he was gonna kill me. <laughs> and if we hit F9, we can actually see that our timer is still ticking on away until we turn it off. 
Which reminds me, we also want to ensure that the timer does indeed start at zero the moment it gets turned on. So now that if I want to make any alterations to my sequence, it's a lot more easier and I no longer have to do the math. Talk about life's convenience. Wow. Now I'm going to show you how we can further enhance this. See all of these switches? When you have that many switches for one sequence, it's a great idea to actually switch over to variables. So I'm going to delete all of these switches and instead create a variable. And I'm going to call this variable stuff sequence manager. And all it's going to do is increment one wherever it needs to increment. So here, 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 and here. And if you recall, I'm just going to have little comments just to remind myself what each does. So if we now head over into stuff, we can actually see that we have stuff appear. Well, we don't need you anymore. We now need stuff sequence manager. And if we go to page two, don't need you, but you will do it instead. And you And you. However, we're not done yet because if you were to actually think about it, for one full second, timer var is going to stay at one, and this is going to continue to increment. I'll even show you an example. You know what would be cool? If stuff really happened. And if I go down, we can already see that stuff sequence manager is all the way up to 19 within the first <laughs> second. And now it's at 61 that you see here, and only two seconds have elapsed. So of course we're going to make a little bit more tweaks to this, right? So over here we're going to create a switch and call it Freeze Sequence Manager on. And I'm going to have it here, here, and here. And then I'm going to create a new page and have the conditions freeze sequence manager. Hit OK. And then going to our timer, we're just going to turn off that switch. So it's all good and done now, right? Well, actually, no, because if we look over here, you're going to notice that while this dialog plays out and for however long the player needs to read this, or maybe you have a longer sequence, the timer in the background will continue to keep on ticking. So if it takes a total of five seconds, the timer will be at 11 seconds in, and it's gonna skip over this and skip over this. So to fix that, you're probably thinking that we gotta freeze the timer by turning it off, right? Well, no, because this condition is based on the timer. And while you can't change that completely, we already have a switch called Freeze Sequence Manager. So we're just going to make a copy and paste it over here. And we're going to set the variable back to its time. So now, regardless of how long it takes for the sequence to play out, be it 10 seconds, 100 seconds, 50 days, 69 years, <laughs> the sequence will still play out accordingly. First second in, he appears. Three second, it's gonna start hopping. Second number six, there's a weird dude over there. I'm allowing some time to pass. 10 Mississippi. Now second number eight, and 10, spin around. Sweet, right? Just don't forget to stop the timer. and end the sequences. I actually wanted to keep spinning for its finale, so... Alright, we recreated our time sequence using variables and a self-made timer. 
And now, whenever you have to make edits, well, check how easy this is. Best part, I don't even have to think about the math. So I want something to happen at second number four. Easy! Bam, 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 bam! Oh, and by the way, you probably realized this, but the variables and switches we created, including stuff, sequence manager, completely universal. So I can actually rename this to just sequence manager because whether it's running on this map or I needed to run it again on a future map for future plans, I don't have to create any additional variables or switches. This depends on sequence manager. This depends on timer variable. And all we gotta do is turn the timer on. And this is a universal freezer for the sequence manager. So as long as you don't have two time sequences running at the exact same time, then you can use the exact same variables and switches that we created for that sequence. Such as meeting a ghost in the next map and a ghost having its own set of AI based on time. And just a small added tip, I know you guys are smart enough to already have realized it, but just in case, if you want to create a timer that counts less than per second, such as per half a second, all you gotta do is divide this up accordingly and then multiply by the same amount to your sequences. If 60 frames is one second, then 30 frames is half a second, and it'll take twice as long to reach the same amount of time. And, ah, he's chasing me through pathfinding because he's so smart and pathfinding is so easy to create. If you don't know what pathfinding is, it takes point A and makes it go to point B while dodging any walls or obstacles that would block them. I created a tutorial for that, so feel free to check it out in the comments, descriptions, or the little icon that's about to appear. And there you have it. I hope this saves you a lot of headache when creating time sequences. Honestly, self made timers are such a great tool. I use timers when I created quick time events. And by the way, if you're interested in seeing me make that, I'm creating dev life vlogs for a game I'm currently creating called Caster's Trap. And you can watch that video right there. Also in the comments, also in the descriptions. If you found this tip to be helpful, let me know with a like or comment down below. I would love to know how much headache it saved you. And remember, as long as you don't have two events playing off of the same timer at the exact same time, then those variables and those switches are completely universal. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Till then, later!